Well, a very warm welcome to St John's online service on the seventh Sunday of Easter. Really glad that you have joined us. This morning we're going to be thinking about prayer. I don't know whether prayer is something that you're struggling with during lockdown at the moment or whether it's something you've turned to um, more regularly during this time. Well, each of us are reassured by the promise that the Lord Jesus, our ascended Lord Jesus, is interceding for us constantly at the right hand of the Father. We read that in Hebrews 7, 25. But first, uh, before we sing together and then we, we're going to watch a, a short clip about prayer, we're going to uh, take a time to come to confession, a chance to get right with God, get back on track with him. So if you'd like to join in, the words for the confession will be on the screen. Let's pray. Lord, our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy upon us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us in the Holy Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You're rich in love and slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. Those are the words of our first song, 10,000 Reasons, which John Wash is going to lead us in as we worship our ascended Lord together. Let's sing.
draws near and my time has come still my soul sing your praise on it ten thousand years and then forever Possibly last thing at night, hopefully, because that's when I say thank you for all the things that happened to me during that day. And I ask for his blessing for the day to come. I usually wake up early in the morning around 4 o'clock, and I believe that is when God literally wakes me up and say, Come, time, it's time to talk about many things before the day began. For me, it's important to be in church to pray. Um, I just, that's where I find I pray best and in an old-fashioned way quite often when I light a candle um, and certainly when I take communion. Even exercising, swimming and running is a great way to pray and encounter God. It's not that when and where I pray, I can pray in bus, I can pray in taxi, I pray on bed, I pray in chapel, I pray in church, so and there's no specific time. If I'm sat at my desk, if I'm at home, at the sink, washing dishes, if I'm in the car, everywhere. You know, God is everywhere. There doesn't have to be a specific time or place or reason. It can be out loud, it can be to yourself. See someone walking past, you think, oh, I can pray for them. Prayer for me is not, is not always asking. It's, it's more about giving, acknowledging and giving thanks, noticing you know, nature and giving thanks. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Dear Lord, that you will see us through these troubling times, as you have so many times in the past. In these times of unknowable fears, we reach out to you because you are our Lord and love and care for us. We ask you to walk beside us as you help us to carry our burdens. Walk beside us. Guide us, 
and strengthen us in all these trials and storms. Help us to hold our faith even in the darkest of hours. Stay with us, Lord, and keep us in your love and care. Amen. Dear Lord, please bless particularly all those who are looking after us and caring for us in this current situation. Please continue to care for all workers who are working now or who are going back to work in the near future. Please grant wisdom and compassion to our leaders that they might choose the path that you alone know is right. Please continue to love, care and cherish all those who are unwell at this time and grant them peace. Also, continue to care for those in isolation or of fragile physical or mental health. Please continue to care for the children at this time and for those who will be caring and educating them now at home or in schools in the future. Please help them to stay safe. Please look after the dear departed as I am sure you have already prepared a place in heaven for them and they are with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, I may not understand what's happening in the world right now, nor how it will work out, but I trust you. I may not see the way forward, but I trust that you'll have a plan and you will show us the way. I have faith that at this moment you're touching hearts, opening doors and looking after all your children. Things may look a little bleak right now, but I have faith that a new dawn is coming and that you will care for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now let us all say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Amen. kingdom come, your Amen. will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 11. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, This is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight, while he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olive, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. <clears throat> Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and 
Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Our Gospel reading today is John chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Amen. Well, thank you, Peter and Cynthia, for bringing our readings to us. Before we reflect on them together, let's just pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your living word. We thank you for its power to speak into our lives. And I ask now that you would use my words, that you would fill them and use them for your purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I wonder when and where you pray. Is prayer something you, you do a lot? Or is it something you just resort to when you're in a sticky situation? A recent survey for Tear Fund um, done by Savanta Congress revealed that nearly half of UK adults, 44%, say they pray and 5% of UK adults say they have started praying during lockdown. So prayer is clearly something quite common. Talking to God is not unusual in the United Kingdom. In terms of its impact, 56% of those who pray agree that prayer changes the world. And 51% who pray say they have seen answers to their own prayers. In verse 14 of our Acts reading, we read that the disciples who had just seen Jesus' ascension, well, they come back to Jerusalem and they join together. It says constantly devoted to prayer. That was their response to their time of waiting, a time of uncertainty before the coming of the Holy Spirit to them on the day of Pentecost. And we too must pray together constantly with devotion and expectation, even if at the moment that has to be on a phone call or on Zoom or at the garden gate. We need to be those who are bold to ask each other, can I pray for you? It is really rare for people to say, well, actually, no thanks. Do try it. Jesus' ascension reminds us of the hope and confidence that we have as we pray. We do not pray alone. Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, prays for us and with us. 
Hebrews 7 verse 25 says this, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Theologian Karl Barth says that our petition is a repetition of his petition. Our petition is a repetition of his petition. We are joining our prayers with those of Jesus. And that is why we pray in Jesus' name and not our own. It is why that we can have confidence that God hears us when we pray. Writer Graham Buxton, in his book, Dancing in the Dark, tells uh, this story. He tells of a little girl who was learning to play the piano. She was on holiday with her family in Norway, staying at a hotel. And as she played the hotel piano, the guests became a little irritated. They were not too impressed with her plink, plonk, plink, plonk. In fact, it soon became a little annoying. And after a time, a man came and sat alongside the girl and started to play with her. And the sound was incredible. The little girl continued as she had done before, blink, blonk, blink, blonk. But the man added the extra notes and the music created was beautiful. It filled the hotel. The man was the girl's father the 19th century Russian composer, Alexander Borodin. And for us, something similar happens when we pray and indeed when we worship. In Christ, our prayers are taken and transformed into something beautiful and holy and acceptable to the Father, our Father, his Lord Jesus Father. Something of what we read in John 17 of, of Jesus' prayer to the Father for us is taking place now in heaven, in the throne room of the King. So as we join our prayers with Jesus, we know that they will be acceptable and heard. Not because of what we do or say, but because of Jesus. In the language of Hebrews again, he is our perfect high priest, cleansing, renewing, perfecting us before the Father. So you say, well, does that mean it doesn't really matter what we pray? Well, no, although sometimes I've found that even a thought that I've had that hasn't even come into being as a prayer is, is answered and I'm astounded by God's graciousness. But prayer is, after all, a conversation with Almighty God, no less. It's a response of love or of dependence. So praise, thanksgiving, repentance, acceptance, silence too, are those things which should spill from our lips. And we need to pray. We're commanded to pray. And incredibly, God chooses to use our prayers to work in this world. My sister lived with her family in Papua New Guinea working with Wycliffe Bible translators until about five years ago. And one holiday break, she and her family and some other families from the centre decided to hire the, the minibus and drive to a local town for a little mini break over the hills. Now travel in Papua New Guinea is pretty precarious. The roads are rough and there are bandits and thieves around. There is no rule of law. My sister learnt to hide her valuables in her shoes, um, although that was the least of her fears. Anyway, they got to the resort where they were going safely. They had a lovely weekend and soon they were on the home journey. Now back home in England, my dad is fast asleep and it's midnight. And he's awoken with this incredible urge to pray for Kate. So he gets up, goes downstairs and prays for about an hour and he returns to bed not really knowing why he'd been woken to pray. The next day he emailed my sister and asked her, you know, are you okay? What happened? You know, have you arrived back safely? And Kate told him that as they were driving back, the minibus came off the road and went into a ditch. No one was hurt, but they were stuck in the middle of nowhere and not knowing what to do. 
And then at that point of vulnerability, a big truck filled with local men arrived and they thought their worst fears had come to fruition. Except the men just got out, they lifted the minibus out of the ditch, back onto the road, and then they went, leaving them, astounded. And that was the exact moment that my dad in England had been woken to pray. Karl Barth says this, God does not act the same way whether we pray or not. Prayer exerts an influence, he says, on God's action. Richard Foster, another Christian thinker, says, we are co-laborers with God, working with God to determine the outcome of events. It seems incredible, but in Christ, that is the reality of who we are in him. Co-heirs, co-laborers, fully equipped with the Spirit who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead. It is no wonder the disciples devoted themselves to prayer, even before Pentecost. They had seen Jesus pray for them, they had seen his devotion, and they knew in his name men could be healed, storms could be stilled, and the dead raised. May our expectation and love of talking to God grow this week, and may the Spirit draw us closer to Jesus and to the Father, in that incredible union of which we are a privilege to be a part. Amen. We're going to respond now in worship together with the beautiful hymn of praise, crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Let's worship our Lord together. such a wonderful hymn. Thy praise shall never, never fail. 
throughout eternity. Or maybe may that be our joy and purpose, that we live our lives in praise of him who has ascended and reigns on high. Well, we've been thinking today about prayer. And can I encourage you, uh, just as we end, to go to the website and download this poster, I'm Praying, um, and stick it in your window. It's an initiative by Rediscover Church in Exeter, and it's promoted as well by Premier Christian News. And the idea is to share with our community that we are praying for them and also to open up the option opportunity for different conversations to start. So maybe someone will say, well, what are you praying for? Or do you actually believe prayer works? And then who knows what might lead from that? If you have any amazing stories when you've done that, please do share them as an encouragement to each other. Please do join us after the end of this service at 11.30 a.m. on Zoom. As always, it's wonderful to see people's faces, laugh together and be encouraged in our faith. So do join us if you haven't tried it already. And we'll be breaking down into smaller groups which are done automatically by Zoom. And it's a way of just chatting to about seven or eight people before we come back together as a big group. And so a final blessing. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.